So the best way to understand how uh, different is an imported media than a linked media and what are the potential problems that you can get into uh, with media being offline is by understanding what happens when you want to delete a file. In this particular project, I have three different bins. One of the bins has only the linked media, which is right now it is open. I also have another bin, which is only imported media. And you can instantly know the difference by looking into the icons here. In the linked media, you can see there's a chain and that is basically telling you that these are all linked media, which means that uh, that the composer has not converted these files into a native file format. In fact, they are exactly the same format as they were when you brought them into the project. On the other hand, when you look into the imported media bin, you can see that there is no chain icon. These are all the files which are actually existing in the Avid Media Files folder. Uh, which I have specified into my portable hard drive. Now let me show you the difference when you want to delete an imported media as compared to a linked media. So suppose I want to delete this, suppose I want to delete this particular file. I will select the file and press delete. And you will see that you are given two options here. The first one is to actually delete the link, which is basically the master clip. And you can delete that. And there's also an option to also delete the associated media files, which means that whatever files is lying in your every media files folder, you can also delete that. Okay. Now, if I only delete the master clip, for example, then you will no longer point to the actual files which are lying in the every media files folder. Now, let me begin by showing you what happens if you delete just the, the just the master clip. So, I selected the master clip and I click OK, and the file is just gone. In, in, in this case, you know that there are the files actually still existing in the every media files folder, which you can delete later because there is an entire file management process which is available in every media composer. There's, there's a media tool by which you can actually access all the medias lying in the every media files folder. It is a, a robust database system that you can access and you can manage it. Okay. Now let's go to the linked media. And if I select any file here and I press delete, you will see that you no longer see any option for associated media because it will not give you this option because since it's a linked media, it's only offering to delete the link, which is the master clip. Okay, so that's the first way that you need to understand what happens, you know, that when you are deleting a linked media as compared to imported media. Okay, so if I click on this and I click delete, the file will be gone. Now let me show you what happens if you delete uh, the associated files. In this particular example, let me just delete associated files. Now in this example, what will happen is that your master clip will remain, but your actual media files will get deleted, which means that every media composer won't be able to play the clip because those clips won't be there at all. Now what is the solution for this? Well, let me see what happens when you delete them. I'll click okay and it is asking me to confirm i confirm and it is gone now if i double click this clip it will, it will show media offline and the reason why this will media offline because the files that it is it was pointing to no longer exist now what is the solution for this now i i know that right now i took a lot of effort to actually go to media offline for you and for most of you who are working in avid I think it's a very common problem that if you do not understand the way every media, every media composer treats the file and how it is connected to each other. In this case, although, the only way to bring back is you have to re-import the file. Now, if you know the files, which must be lying in your portable hard drive or maybe in another location, which you converted into every media files folder, if you know which file it is, then you can pretty much make this work. Now let, me sh now let me show you how you can relink to files because that's what this whole lesson is all about. What happens? What are the different scenarios by which you might encounter this media offline? And I'm talk talking about something that you might do inadvertently, something that you might not know would cause a media offline. The most common problem and the most common situation is when if you are working on a linked media and by the way this whole problem of media offline is quite common in linked media and very uncommon in imported media 
and I'll tell you why. If you're working on a project and you import in the files, now most possibly, you know, you might be working for a portable hard drive or maybe you downloaded something and it is in the downloads folder and immediately linked to your files and you immediately linked to those files. Now, much later, you might do, might clean up your download folder, you might move those files to some other location, and every media files would not know where to find them. That's where you encounter the common problem of media offline. Now, let me show you a real-life example here. Let me import, let me bring in some linked media. Okay, so what I'll do, I will just right-click, input, source browser, and here, in the source browser, let me just go to any of the, any of the, folders here so I'll go to so I have some files here in my stock footage and here I have uh, avid stock for example and I have all these files okay now I'm trying to bring in for example this one as a linked media okay so 735 736 5 I'm bringing in as a linked file okay so I click on link and I click on link here and the file will come and you will instead it is the file okay now if i go back to my finder level for example in my finder level if i go to this folder and this is avid stock this is where i brought the file if say for example you did change the name of the folder so it was 007a and you just removed the a and you made it 007 and you come back to media composer and you double click on this you realize the media has gone offline reason for it very simple the folder name got changed now anything can happen i might move the folder also and as i mentioned to you in the most common ways that you might move the folder by mistake or you might have imported a file in the downloads folder and then you cleaned up the downloads folder so there are different scenarios one scenario is that file no longer exists in your hard drive or in your portable hard drive another reason could be that if you have renamed the folder or you might have moved the folder now Media Composer offers you a very, very simple solution to fix this problem. All you have to do is right click on the file, okay, and go down to an option called Relink to Files. Now, unfortunately, due to some bug, this option is grayed out. And if you also have the same problem that I am facing right now, is that if this option is grayed out for you, then you might be having a bug. Or it could be some other reason that I do not understand. But still, there is a way around it. So, let me before I go there, let me just also explain to you that you will find relink to files and you will also find relink. There's a big difference between both. Please understand the relink to files is specific to QuickTime files that you might have linked into your project, meaning it is not an imported file. Any files that you might have linked to your project this option applies to them but if you have imported media and imported media have gone media offline in that case you have to use this relink option so there's a big difference between relink to file and relink and please understand the difference now, as i mentioned to you before this option is given for me it's not working for me what i'll do i'll go to input i'll go to source browser okay and here I will choose the same file which was showing media offline. All right, so I'll just go to my folder of avid stock, go down, this is the file, and I'll click on link. The moment I do that, the file comes back. Okay, so this is the way around if you have a problem of grayed out relink to file. On the other hand, if for whatever reason, I mean, it's very rare by the way, if you have the files in your avid media files folder. It will be there okay it's very rare that any imported media goes offline if suppose you face a situation of media offline in that case you right click and you click on relink this dialog box opens so look very closely here what are different options here load media database now i'm going to come back to this later very often and i'll show you what are the database files and where do where do they lie okay i'll show you i'll show you all of that so it basically what it does by loading the media database is that it ensures that all the files are refreshed. Okay. The second option is relink selected master clip. So if you have multiple options here and you want those master clips to be relinked, you can try this option. Okay. 
relink only to media for the current project. So sometimes what happens, you might want to bring in files uh, from another project. In those cases, all these options, make sure that those are covered. Now, there is a very good chance that you might have worked in a particular media and you are working in a low, low, and you're working in a low quality and you want to relink them to a high quality files. Okay. In this, in that case, this option can come very handy because you can choose relink by target, a specific target. Okay. And you can uh, specify what option to choose as far as uh, selecting those files are concerned because all those files will be exactly same except the quality so in, in that case time code and source name will all, all be the same and that's how it will relink with the new high quality files by using these options right here and you can match make sure that they all match by the uh, source names which means the original file name will be the same and you might also want to relink as per a particular video format okay so if you want to go for any 3d video format you can choose that or you can choose a specific format which is of the current project only so all these options are quite simple you hardly have to click anywhere different okay and this should work for you okay this is good enough for work for you but please remember this option is only applicable for imported media not for linked media very often people go to this option and expect miracles to happen it is not going to happen this option is applicable only for imported media not for linked media now i did mention to you about the media database and there is manual way of so say for example you've tried everything you have problem with the imported media for example everything you have done you tried relink it is not working you know then there's a manual way of fixing things and let me show you how you can fix that the first one is by reloading the media database all of this is available in file media and you will find these options can you see refresh media directories you click on it and all the media directories will get refreshed say for example you have change the location or updated the files inside the event media files folder you might have made new folders renamed some folders inside because you just want to do maybe some kind of a file management after you have done all those things in the finder level and you come back to every video composer and you face problems then this can fix them you go to file go to media you can go to load media databases it will just load all the media databases again for media composer you know these are some of the manual ways by which you can try and fix things if you are facing too many media offline problems let me show you where uh, where exactly those those media database files exist for that you need to head to the avid media files folder now i am in the avid media files folder and inside this folder i have multiple folders and this is where all the files are existing at the moment now if you can see that there are two files here okay this file which is mmob.mdb and you have something called .pmr these are your media database files and you can actually go ahead and delete them don't do nothing will happen if you delete them okay and then you reload every media composer this files will be created again and when these files get created it refreshes everything which means it loads all the databases it refreshes the entire file system so in a way if nothing works your last resort is deleting these two files and closing with media, with media composer and op opening it again and that way your media your media database your file system everything will get updated and there's a very good chance that your media offline problems will get solved now while talking about media offline i think there is a very important topic that needs to be covered which is consolidate and transcode i think if you are new to every media composer i think it is very important that you understand the difference between transcoding and consolidating because unlike any other software your understanding about these two topics has to be solid to actually do anything in those areas 
when you're using Avid Media Composer. Now, let me quickly show you what do I mean by transcode and what do I mean by consolidate. Now, scenario one, you might be in a situation where you might have worked in different folders and your files are all over the place, which, which means your files are scattered. Maybe you are working from a hard drive and maybe where you're working on a multiple hard drives and multiple uh, you know uh, folders inside your computer and you might have every media files spread across you know different places if you want to consolidate and bring everything to one location then consolidate is the option okay you can consolidate a clip you can consolidate a sequence now if i right click into a linked media right here and you right click and you choose consolidate and transcode and here, if I click on consolidate, it will tell you that one clip has been selected and you can select an option which says consolidate only linked media. So maybe you might have linked media spread across and you want to bring all of them into your Epic Media Files folder, then you can choose this option. Okay. There's also an option for skip native media files which are already on a target drive. So which basically means that okay let me explain to you what is target drive now you can see the consolidated option is not active because i haven't specified the target drive as you remember every media files folder is created by default in your root folder in your computer but you can also specify every media files folder in your portable hard drive idea mac is my computer and i edit idea edit 2 is my portable hard drive so suppose I want to consolidate all my files and I want to make sure that whatever files exist in my portable hard drive remains and I don't want them to be moved, you know, where they already exist, then you can choose this option of skip native media files, okay. You have an option of avid long GOP media also and you can re-encode them and by selecting this option and if you want to have more controls over the audio sampling rate that you are bringing into your Avid Media Files folder, you can choose from these options as well. But please remember the very important understanding is that this option of consolidating, okay, is basically if you want to bring everything into one location, and that location is a Avid Media Files folder based on the target drive. Here, here lies a very simple issue. The issue is consolidate will not work with linked media because linked media will not be bought into every media files folder without transcoding. The big difference between transcoding and consolidate is that consolidate is just to copy the media into one drive to bring everything under one place and that places every media files folder. It will not convert, it will not change the format. Whereas transcode actually converts the format into the avid native format okay and that conversion is called transcoding so there's a difference between consolidating and transcoding so this option of actually consolidating this particular linked media into my portable hard drive and i'm talking about linked media by the way will not work And it says all the clips were skipped because I'm trying to bring in linked media into my AB Media Files folder, which will be skipped. This is only applicable if my native AVID files are spread across and I want to bring them into my portable hard drive. So, a scenario where it will work is that, say, for example, all my AVID media files are all my native avid files are existing in my workstations every media files folder and i want to bring them to my portable hard drive i want to bring them to the avid media files folder in my portable hard drive in that case a consolidate would be an excellent way to go ahead i hope you understood the difference i repeat consolidate is only for imported media actually because it brings all the files which are lying all across into one location which is avid media files folder and as you know a linked media which is not a native avid file format will not be bought inside 
an Avid Media Files folder. All right. So now let's look for Transcode option. So if I if I right click this linked media and I go to Consolidate and this time I choose Transcode. As you can see, I get all sorts of options. The first one is Transcode only linked media. Just fine because I want to transcode this particular linked media and which means I'm going to convert this into a Avid native file format. And it, here it says, it says convert to project frame rate, which is a good idea because whatever the project frame rate I have chosen, this file will be converted into that particular frame. Now that depends upon your workflow. If you want to keep it the same, you can keep it the same. If you want to convert it, then you can choose a file format here. Okay. You can have a host of options here. This is your Evit native file format. I've been working on this particular file format, so I choose this. You can have scaling quality. All right. This is to make sure that your playback works well and you choose what kind of playback you are going to be using after you have imported this particular file or transcoded this particular file. You can choose color encoding, you can choose frame flags if you are bringing in a big, um, if you're bringing in a 4K footage and you want to uh, pan and scan or you want to reframe the shot uh, because maybe your project uh, project dimension is 1080p but you're bringing a 4K, in that case you can choose frame flags and you can see how much space it's going to take, what is the file size going to be and if you see, if I change the option, the file size changes as you can see. So LB is definitely a low bitrate, so the file size is smaller. You can also have a control over converting it into a specific audio file, audio sample rate. And that's it. And if you click on transcode, it will convert this existing linked media into DNX HD LB. And it will bring this converted Avid native file into my target portable hard drive and it will be saved in the Avid Media Files folder. That's how Transcode works. It works even better and it actually is very valuable when you want to transcode a sequence. If I go to a sequence folder and you can see I have a sequence which is like just a string out sequence. I can just right click this and go to Transcode and Consolidate. And if I choose Transcode, what is going to happen now? is that every single clip on my timeline will be transcoded and the only major difference and the only major addition into the dialog box is handle. Now I'll give you a simple scenario to understand this. You are working in, so this is your assembly edit, okay? And regarding your assembly edit, you were working in a linked media, okay? You did not, uh, you did not waste any of your hard drive space. You did not waste any time in converting any file format and then importing it. You were working entirely on linked media until you assembly edit. You had thousands of clips, but in the assembly edit, you have obviously removed, you know, the, op the option of choosing half of the clips, which means you have a trimmed down sequence you are not confused with so many footage now. You have a limited number of footage and everything is in your timeline as per your assembly edit. Now, when you want to move to the next stage of edit, where you want to do fine tuning and you want to have options, you would want some extra frames for each clip that is lying on your timeline. Because once you have converted it and you have gone to the next stage, which is your fine cut, you would want to have some options, right? You would want to have some extra frames beyond your marking and beyond your mark out. And that is why you have the options of handles. It depends upon how you want to work, what is your workflow, you can increase or decrease the number of frames of handles. Now, please understand this handle is for each mark in or mark out. Okay? So that is the only difference you get when you're trying to transcode a sequence as compared to transcoding a clip. And here you have an option for background process as well. If you are busy and you're already working, you can choose background and you can, this process will continue in the background while you continue editing.
okay it all depends if you want it all depends how powerful your workstation is and you will be able to work comfortably if you have a very good and powerful workstation and you choose a background process of transcoding and you can still continue to work 